Hello students, in today's class we will learn about friction. What is friction? What are the applications of frictions? What are the types of frictions, limiting frictions and laws of friction? What is friction? Friction is the resistive force or it is the entire force which happens due to the relative applied force. It happens in between two surfaces of an object which comes in contact to each other. So to understand let us consider object 1 and object 2 which came in contact to each other with a surface. So what happens if we consider object 2 be a static or object 2 is in the other direction moving in other direction and object 1 is moving in other direction or you may consider 1 a static also. So the phenomenon occurs in static as well as in the dynamic position also. So uh, it's on you how you take the phenomenon will happen in both of the things. So if a force is applied on object 1 towards negative x direction, there will be a anti-force or anti-force or friction which will be working on uh, no, object 2 as you can see. That anti-force is termed as friction. Okay. So to understand it, uh, the phenomenon why it happens, let us consider object 1. So in object 1, we could see there is uh, some uh, triangular types of, uh, of shapes that is our uh, crest and peak that can be magnified and we, uh, from in the surfaces and we could observe it. Similar crest and peak we could find on object 2 also. So what will happen if a peak get uh, st stuck in between two uh, other peaks of object 2? It will be interlocked. Hence, they will restrict and uh, uh, or they will give a resistive force which will not allow uh, the body to move. That is nothing but a frictional force. What are the applications of friction? Due to this uh, force and anti-force, there are uh, uh, several applications of frictions also. For example, walking. What happens? As I have told you earlier, friction, there is, uh, this is the entire force of the applied force or this is, uh, this is, the, uh, is the resistive force of the applied force. So what happens while walking, if one of our leg applies F force that is capital F uh, force towards the positive X direction as you can see in the picture there will be an anti force that is a small F which is can be uh, which will be applied by the other leg towards negative X axis. So hence what happens our body shifts from one position to another position. That means this application of frictions actually helps us to walk. If the frictional force would not be present over here, then it would be impossible for us to walk because this entire force pushes our body or it shifts our body from one point to another point. What is uh, other uh, application of friction? Like uh, a swimmer has a frictional force with water. What happens? It, it goes through, uh, through the water with respect to the what fluid uh, frictions. That is also termed as viscosity. So what happens? They are uh, going, uh, they, uh, they are moving, they are applying a force for which they are getting a drag force. So what happens? It moves forward. It moves forward. So the swimmer moves forward. So this is the same phenomenon like uh, you are walking only. The swimmer applies force in the forward direction. So the, the drag force, there is a creation of drag force and the swimmer moves forward. So this is what happens. And the rolling of, uh, of car uh, or, the, uh, or a ball, what happens? Uh, the frictional, uh, there is a sliding friction. 
or ro as well as rolling friction what uh, which makes the wheel to move from one position to another position so we could understand that the frictional force is a uh, is beneficial for us as well as sometimes it's not beneficial for us because frictional force generates heat so it's the unnecessary heat what we got but sometimes unnecessary heat also works in terms of welding so there are pros and cons for both frictions for static as well as dynamic friction also so type of friction static friction sliding friction and rolling friction so what is static friction when object 1 and object 2 are set on each other like this what happens uh, there is no motion but if try the note one note to be uh, there is one note you have to remember that if there was no friction the body would slide from one point to another point because there will be no friction and the, uh, the, uh, the surfaces will be as smooth for which the body will uh, will slide over one another and they will not sit on each other that means a static body also is having a friction sliding friction sliding friction is something this action what do we do we uh, uh, we apply a force on this and therefore there is a uh, there is a anti friction working over here for which we could ex we could uh, feel the heat of friction as i have told you friction has a disadvantage also of heat so this is what friction happening if i apply if i rub my hand my two hand uh, two palms so what will happen if i apply a force over here so i will experience a heat over there this is because a and a friction is working on the other side of the applied force what is rolling friction since we can see the ball or a uh, car which rotates at certain um, uh, way that is clockwise or anti clockwise depending on how it is moving so what happens it rolls on a surface so uh, the rolling friction uh, uh, is also having a resistivity due to friction due to the uh, the point of contact because the point of contact is such a less that uh, the friction is less compared to this friction also the friction of rubbing between hands because my surface area is much more bigger than a uh, point con than a contact point of a circuit of a uh, ball or that may be a wheel which makes the wheel to move forward so what is limiting friction to understand the thing is that how to understand the limiting friction let us consider an object this is the surface where the uh, an object will come now see what happens as we have understand that if object 1 and object 2 comes in contact to each other and object 2 is moving with a force f there will be an entire force that is ff that is a frictional force so that means there is something between these two mathematically which makes them to be anti of each other this this is tend this is named as your coefficient of friction now the second thing is that the object one is applying a its weight w towards downwards uh, to the earth what happens with respect to that there is a normal reaction keep a remember on this there is a normal reaction due to the applied weight according to newton third law of motion okay so what happens from that we could derive a formula that is f is direct is equals to mu into n so what is f over here this is the frictional force this is the frictional force was created in a body let us uh, okay this is the frictional force created in a body for uh, uh, f ff is equals to mu into n what is mu mu is the coefficient of friction or the friction between the surfaces and n is the your 
normal reaction which is created due to the application of weight from the object one okay so if i need to what will be the mathematical terms f f is equals to mu n so what are the laws of friction the laws of friction are the force applied in a body or the friction or in other words you can say the frictional force applied in a body is directly proportional to is directly proportional to normal what is the normal as i have told you the normal is the uh, the anti force or the opposite force according to newton third law of motion occurred due to the application of weight from this yellow body to yellow object to the earth this is termed as laws of first law of friction so i could uh, mathematically write that force frictional force is directly proportional to normal so what what i have done in the previous slide as you can see that frictional force is equals to mu into m so what do we do after to remove the proportionality we multiply with a constant name mu mu is the coefficient of friction or friction constant which is which is occurring between the object 1 and object 2 that is between the two surfaces so the coefficient of friction it in practical sense the coefficient of friction of object 2 will be other will be the one will, uh, and the coefficient of, of uh, friction of object 1 will be other so what happens that they, the friction of both the object uh, coefficient of both the object can be same or either can be different so that depends on what type of material is it and what type of uh, applications are you uh, considering so laws of friction as i have told you frictional force is directly proportional to normal uh, what is second thing is friction is independent of area of contact so there is uh, so long as there is area in contact area so what does it means to understand in the in this manner understand so as you can see this is a small uh, cube and this is a uh, is a bigger cube what happens the contact area is maximum so the uh, frictional force will be maximum the contact area is less that means the frictional area will be less so third one is the limits what depends it depends on it doesn't depends on velocity in normalization normal thing as you can see if you, as you can uh, see that f so what do you mean by force as we know force is equals to m into a what is a a is is, is equals to rate of change of velocity so here comes in, uh, the main work why uh, why velocity works so at the larger limit uh, limit i mean that within larger limit the velocity doesn't makes any sense but in kinetic friction that means uh, there are two types of friction we'll be studying in the next class that is static friction and kinetic friction here there we can find that uh, the that depends on the velocity because if there is a maximum velocity there will be friction because we are we are taking kin uh, kinetic fr uh, friction that is a motion friction and before that we, we we considered a static friction fine now friction friction as well as depends on the surface is in contact surface in contact means if uh, i have made a as you can see there's a cube this is a uh, cylinder this is a sphere and this is a triangle so you have to understand if triangle this point of triangle is connected the friction will be less compared to the area covered by the cube now this is what happens that means that this is this depends on the how much surface area is connected to the other surface if it's a point to point connected then the friction will be very less 
if it a uh, complete long surface is connected to one point to another point then the surface area will be maximum vice versa now third but not the la uh, uh, last oh, sorry fifth but, but not the least but there are more uh, friction laws what we have derived but uh, in today's we will be keeping up to five so we have to understand that what are the laws working on the friction uh, uh, free, uh, stat, uh, kinematic and the static friction so we could we could lastly derive that for static friction is always greater than kinetic friction or dynamic friction or motion friction that is what do we mean by the coefficient of friction is maximum in terms of static friction that is in rest if you consider any body to be in rest and uh, if you go for uh, uh, the more uh, calculations or everything you could find that the the static coefficient of static friction that is mu what i have shown you over here the, this one mu this will depend on what type of motion is there is it rest or is it in in motion is it, is it in dynamic motion so what happens if a body is in rest or in dynamic motion what uh, we can see that the coefficient of friction for static is always uh, will be always greater than the kinetic or dynamic or, or, or other any motions why because Static means it's it's in a stable position. It will not move from one point to another point. That means it is having a complete friction, frictional uh, contact. But when uh, in terms of kinetic, that means it is moving from one uh, from on the other surface in a with a velocity. That means there since there is a less velocity, that's why if there is a less uh, friction. That's why it could move. Hence, we could tell that. Friction depends on friction depends on, on the types of motion as well as what is the area of in contact with the one body to another body. If it's a small area or it's a big area, that means it may be a point area or it may be big area. Okay. So that's what that's all for today. We'll see you in our next class. Send your queries. Thank you.